Hello and welcome. I am Exit Light and this is my channel. Today we're going to discuss the very strange disappearance of a young woman from Montgomery, Vermont. Before we get started, if you would please give this video a thumbs up. As you know, it really helps my channel. Also, if you are not subscribed and you would like to be subscribed, please go ahead and do so. It's free, and if you click the bell, you'll be notified when my content goes live. All right, let's get started talking about this, shall we? On Friday, March 19, 2004, 17 year old Brianna Maitland left her job at the Black Lantern Inn in Montgomery, in Vermont, as she normally did. The car she was driving was found by a state trooper the following day, backed into the side of an abandoned house about a mile away from her workplace. Brianna was nowhere to be seen, and she has never been seen again. Brianna Alexandra Maitland was born October 8, 1986, in Burlington, Vermont, to Bruce and Kelly Maitland. She had one older brother and was raised on her parents' farm in East Franklin, Vermont, near the Canadian border. She attended Missisquoi Valley Union High School before transferring to Enosburg Falls High School in near Enosburg Falls during her sophomore year. On Brianna's 17th birthday in October of 2003, she decided that she wanted to move away from her parents' farm so that she could live closer to a group of friends who lived 15 miles away and attended a different high school. She enrolled in her friend's high school and stayed at several friends' homes. By the end of February 2004, she had dropped out of school and moved in with her friend Julian Stout. She moved to Sheldon, Vermont, which is approximately 20 miles west of Montgomery. About three weeks prior to her disappearance, Brianna was attacked at a party by a former friend, Keeley LaCrosse, who hit her in the face several times while Brianna was sat in a truck. Keeley thought Brianna was flirting with her boyfriend. Brianna tried to defuse the situation by leaving the party with her boyfriend, James Robitaille, but Keeley followed Brianna out to the parking lot. One of her friends at the party claimed that Brianna refused to fight Keeley despite the fact that she had martial arts training. Brianna suffered a broken nose, a concussion, and she later filed charges against Lacrosse. Then the complaint was dropped. On the morning of Friday, March 19, 2004, Brianna took an exam to receive her GED. After completing the test, she had lunch with her mother to celebrate. Her father, Bruce, was out of state working in New York at the time. Her mother, Kelly, described Brianna as being in a good mood and they had discussed plans of her attending college. After lunch, they spent the afternoon shopping and running errands. While waiting in the checkout line of a local store, Kelly said something outside caught Brianna's attention and Brianna left the store. Kelly met Brianna in the parking lot and she noticed that her daughter seemed upset and agitated. She told her mother that she needed to go home and get ready for her upcoming shift at the Black Lantern. Kelly did not ask what had happened in the parking lot, and she just dropped Brianna off at Jillian Stout's house in Sheldon between 3.30 and 4 p.m., and that would be the last time that Kelly ever saw her daughter. At some point before leaving for her work shift, Brianna left a note for Jillian saying that she would return after work that evening, and then she left her work at the Black Lantern, in a 1985 Oldsmobile sedan registered to her mom, Kelly. After completing her shift at the Black Lantern, Brianna left at approximately 11.20 p.m. She told her co-workers that she needed to get home and get some rest before working the next day at her second job in St. Albans, and she left alone. Early the next afternoon, on March 20, 2004, a Vermont State Police Trooper was dispatched to an abandoned house known locally as the Old Dutchburn House, on Route 118 in Richford, about a mile from the Black Lantern Inn. The Oldsmobile that Brianna was driving was found backed into the side of the house. And I mean backed into the house. The siding of the home had been breached by the rear end of the car, and a piece of plywood that had been covering a window 
lay on the car's trunk. The vehicle had backed in to the building in such a manner that the rear bumper was stuck on the foundation of the house, causing the rear tires to be elevated, which meant that it could not be driven. There were no visible indications that the vehicle had come off the road in an accident. No brake marks, no skid marks, no upset dirt in the area that would look like she had gone off the road. Her doors were unlocked, and the keys had been taken. Inside the car, two of Brianna's paychecks were still on the front seat of the car, and outside of it, the trooper found some loose change, a water bottle, and an unsmoked cigarette. On the passenger floor, inside a styrofoam takeout container, there was a half-eaten burrito. Next to the Dutch barn house was a woman's fleece jacket that did not belong to Brianna. There was also a broken necklace on the ground outside the driver's side door. The trooper, who assumed that the car had been abandoned by a drunk driver, had a towing company come and take the vehicle to a local garage. Brianna was not reported missing for several days, and her mother, Kelly, did not learn about the discovery of her car until five days later. Jillian had seen Brianna's note to her on Friday, March 19th, but then she spent the weekend away. When she came home, she found the note in the exact same place undisturbed. She assumed that Brianna had decided to stay elsewhere, and she did not call Kelly until Tuesday, March 23rd. Kelly began calling people in order to try and find her daughter's whereabouts, including friends from her workplace, from her former school, but no one had heard from her. So her mom filed a missing persons report that day on Thursday, March 25th. She gave photos of her daughter to the Vermont State Police in St. Albans. A trooper showed them a picture of the Oldsmobile found in the old Dutch Bourne house, upon which they immediately identified the car. Initially, the Vermont State Police were skeptical that foul play was involved, the area surrounding the old Dutch burn house was searched on foot by police and a sniffer dog, but nothing was found. Some passing motorists found the scene at the car backed up into the old house odd enough that they stopped and had taken pictures of it. Upon the car's return to the Maitland family, Bruce noted that his daughter's ATM card, glasses, contacts, lens case, and migraine medication had all been left inside the car. A man who drove by the Dutchburn house between 11.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. on March 19th or 20th said that the car's headlights might have been on. He said that he did not see anyone in or around the car. A second man who drove by between midnight and 12.30 a.m. on Saturday recalled seeing a turn signal flashing on the car. At around 4 a.m. on March 20th, a former boyfriend of Brianna drove past the car after a party across the border in Canada. He thought he recognized the vehicle, but he did not see anyone in or around it. There were claims, whispers, and gossips that Brianna was being held captive in a house occupied by a local drug dealer of whom she was an acquaintance. In 2006, a sighting at a casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey, brought renewed interest to the case, but the woman seen was never identified. In 2012, law enforcement investigators thought there might be a possible connection between Brianna's disappearance and the serial killer, Israel Keys, of whom I did a video, um, part of a video, on the 31 Days of Halloween, in some of the most unknown serial killers in the United States. But he was ultimately ruled out as a suspect by the FBI. In September of 2020, funding was completed with a DNA laboratory, Othram, to analyze DNA found in the car. In the week following Brianna's disappearance, the Vermont State Police received an anonymous tip claiming that she was, in fact, being held against her will in a house in nearby Berkshire, Vermont, 10 miles from Montgomery. The rented house was occupied by Raymond L. Ryans and Nathaniel Charles Jackson, who were two known drug dealers from New York.
The house was raided by police on April 15, 2004, and drug paraphernalia was discovered inside, as well as substantial amounts of cocaine and marijuana, but there was no sign of Brianna found. Law enforcement was informed that Brianna had allegedly experimented with hard drugs in the past, specifically crack cocaine, and knew Ryan's and Jackson. In late 2004, police received a signed affidavit from an anonymous older female who implicated both Ryan's and Jackson in the disappearance and alleged murder. It alleged that she had been murdered approximately a week after her disappearance and she was killed during an argument over money she had lent him to purchase crack. She also claimed that her body had been temporarily stored in the basement of a recently incarcerated local woman's home and then the body was dismembered with a table saw and disposed of on a pig farm. The authorities were unable to corroborate the claims in the letter. It was later concluded by the police that foul play was likely the cause of Brianna's disappearance. Brianna's parents both believe that she had to have been abducted by multiple people, stating that it would have been very difficult for a single assailant to subdue her given her jiu-jitsu training. In March of 2016, investigators revealed to a local television station that they had recovered DNA samples from the car, but the results of the DNA tests were not made public. In July 2016, the farmhouse where Brianna's car was discovered was destroyed in a fire. As always in these cases, if you or anyone you know has any information, no matter how small you think it is or how irrelevant you might think it is, these cases are often solved by very small bits of information. So please call the police if you know anything. Thank you for coming to my channel and good night.